Hello interwebs, welcome to uh, Let's Fix Computers. Uh, this isn't a computer either. <laughs> Once again, we're doing whatever comes into the shop. This is a Cordy, I'm guessing that's pronounced, uh, Robo Hoover. It's a Roomba, basically. Um, or actually, uh, sorry, a Robo Vacuum Cleaner. It's kind of funny because in the same way that Roomba is a trademark, so is Hoover. So in, in the UK, we always call it a Hoover. You Hoover the room. But of course, Hoover is a brand name and whatever. Anyway, um, this thing needs fixing. So we're not going to be doing any super interesting diagnostics on this any or anything. Um, it's already been done for us, apparently. The main, apparently, the main controller board in it is busted. And the customer came in with the device and this replacement uh, controller board which I shall call a motherboard, I guess. Hang on a sec, Cortana is talking to me from across the room. Your Use your voice or the keyboard, shut up. Anyway, so we've got this control board um, and the company that makes this um, get uh, sold or sent the client a new control board um, and was just like, yeah, get that fitted and you'll be right or something. Um, so yeah, we've got all the parts we need. So I was like, sure, I guess I can fit that. Um, so yeah, we're basically going to take this apart. And with a bit of luck, we might see something kind of interesting or cool along the way. So yeah. Um, now, there is a video on how to disassemble this, um, which I should probably look at. But I kind of want to YOLO it and just see how far we get. Um, However, looking at the bottom of this, I am actually looking at the amount of bits that can come off here and going, uh, maybe I should have checked the video first. Right, let's get to it. So that's obviously the, um, the, the, the bin, the dust trap, whatever, which thankfully is already empty. So I think I'm just going to start unscrewing stuff and see what comes away. We've got what looks like a battery compartment here. Let's open that up. Okay, we've got a LiPo battery. Um, huh. All right, fair enough. This is not a balanced pack by the looks of things. Looks like this is four 18650s, unless I'm mistaken. 14.4 um, volts, so um, it's a four cell. Um, yeah, 2500 milliamp hours, but there's no balance wire. Not even a, um, uh, there's not even a temperature sensor. So, huh, that seems, un that seems odd that you've got a four cell battery with no balance wire or apparently no battery management. Oh well, uh, cool, well that's that out. That will go through that hole at the bottom there, so that's fine. I'm gonna take off one of these little covers here and see if these wheels need to come off. Right, does that come off? This seems to be working loose. I need a pry tool. Right, this feels very spring loaded under here. Uh, yes, it does have a big old spring, which has just come off. Oh, this is very modular, this. Okay, so that's. We've got one of the motors there. Can I disconnect that? There we go. So you can replace the motors and the uh, the wheels. That's very cool. A bit grotty. And then, so that's got a spring down there, which hooks onto there, which is what gives, and that pulls the foot up. So that obviously gives it the self-leveling to make sure it doesn't get beached easily. And that's the top cover there. All right, so yeah, we'll take out these two uh, foot modules. So far, so good. We've also got this bumper on the front here. So I'm guessing that guy's got to come off at some point. I'm hoping it's got screws around the outside, but I'm not sure if those actually need to come out or not. I also like so far, uh, all of the screws are identical, which is always very nice as well. So I'm not going to have to worry about keeping track of stuff. Mm. 
get out. There we go. We'll brush all of these down before we put them all back in as well. Just so we're not putting dust and horridness back in the device. Okay, that's that. Uh, right. I think I'm going to take out the main body screws now and I'm just going to start seeing what comes off. This guy just spins freely, so it doesn't look like that. That doesn't look, that's probably not attached to anything. And these two silver contacts are presumably where it goes onto its charging station. Uh, fine, okay. <clears throat> I'll have to switch to a deeper screwdriver to get down to these recessed ones. This is why we always buy long single screwdrivers like this. Because if you have a multi screwdriver bit set, like one of these guys with removable bits on it, that don't fit down the hole. So this is why I always buy long screwdrivers like this now, just because it just means that when you do come across a recessed screw, not a big deal. It's not very often you do see super recessed screws, but it happens just often enough that you're going to need to have some long screwdrivers on hand anyway. So you may as well buy singles. Right, that one's out. Did we get that one? I think that's everyone. Okay, what's holding us? Let's just see if I've actually achieved anything with that. So I'm just going to see if this starts coming apart now. Which it is. So let's get a prying tool in there and just see. So we've got a gap forming there, but it doesn't want to come off yet. Does this come off? It does. Huh. Yeah, we're still taking bits off. I don't think... Oh, we've got some more screws down here. Again, very modular this. I like it. Is this right? Yeah, this seems to be the right thing to do. Okay, we're making progress. I think I need to figure out how this front bumper comes off. I'll take the screws off, and if it turns out that I didn't need to, then, well, I'll put them back on again. Right, so that's taken off those two bits of trim. So does that... Oh, 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 it's happening. Right, what's holding on? Okay, so this the whole centre section is just lifted out. We've got a wire connecting to that front sensor bar. Ah, which I've just pulled off. And we've got another wire going down to the power button on top, I guess. Let's just disconnect that. There we go. And that's that guy out. And there's the circuit board we're looking for. And so as you can see, we've got two big old uh, motors for the, um, which are geared as well, for the brushes. We've got another motor here for the bottom brush. And then we've got a, presumably that's going to be a blower for the actual suction. Cool. Neato. And then, yeah, there's uh, little sensors all around the outside so it can see what it's doing. And is that the sensor? Yeah, then look, we've got these micro switches here for the front sensor bar. Two of them, so it's presumably sensing a left, left impact and right impact. And based on which one compresses first, it can determine where the obstruction is and turn accordingly. Cool. Hopefully, we'll be able to test this out um, when it's done. I'll turn it on and see if it can hoover up my shop. Right, so this board is just going to be a matter of just unplugging lots of wires. So let's come in a little bit closer to there and take a, a look-see. And it looks like the replacement board we've got is a different revision. The, uh, the main processor is in the same place, but we've got some different action here for this power supply area. So uh, it looks like there's an updated version of the board. I wonder if there was a problem with this one and they've actually issued a, um, a, a revision too. Although actually that says V1.0. 
And so does that one. Yeah, who knows? Oh well, it's got all the correct, it's got all the right connectors on it, although it's got a missing one there. Interesting. I'm looking at this purely from a uh, from a, uh, a curiosity standpoint. I don't know enough about this device and I can't be bothered to reverse engineer it or anything like that. So, but yeah, it's got some interesting stuff on it. Let's start pulling all these connectors off. So I'll just uh, walk all of those out and I will stab them into the new board as I go where I can, just so I can keep track of what's gone where. Of course, one of the advantages, as I often say, to recording your own work is if you lose track of something, you can review your own footage and see where stuff was plugged in. If you are taking things apart and you don't have like a camera rig like I do, because unless you're making videos, why would you? Um, I recommend just having your phone on hand and just take pictures as you go. And then you will have a photo album you make that shows step by step how you took it apart and what screws were where. And just every time you take a few bits out, take another picture, and you'll have your own step-by-step -step guide on how to reassemble it. Okay, this is going easy enough. All of these connectors are a slightly different size, so we shouldn't have any issues figuring out where they all go. Are you locking? Ugh, there we go. Right, these ones down the side are a little bit awkward to get to. Oh, there we go, we can grab those. Hmm. Some of these are a bit stiff. Now, you'll notice that a lot of these I'm pulling on the wires, not the connectors, which a lot of people frown on, and they are correct. It's not a good habit. But when you've been fixing things and taking apart laptops long enough, you kind of get to know just by touch which ones are going to break and which ones aren't. Uh, as soon as you actually start pulling on, on a connector, just experience will tell you whether that connector is going to break or not. Um, and with some of these, like these ones here with the silicon wires on um, that went to the uh, drive motors, uh, they don't, that one's coming off okay. That one didn't feel very nice, so we're going to do that one properly. Let's have another feel of that, just to see if I can loosen that. No, that one feels pretty stuck. Then, ah, uh, fingernails. 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 Nope. Ooh, oh, that one's really stuck. Pliers. Yeah. Pliers will just mangle the connector if I'm not careful. Uh, prime tool. There we go. Right, is that everyone out? Uh, some more sensors around the front. I think those will answer to the tweezers. Don't like the feel like that. There we go. And that's the last one. Good, right, one, two, three screws, and I think that board is out. Then what I'll do, I will take this out to the kitchen and out the back and hit it with the air compressor. Just to get all of the residual dust out of it. There we go. Ugh, spider. Gross. Cool, right. Uh, I'm going to go and air compressor all of this out, and then we'll have a quick nosy and just see if there's anything else of interest there, just for the sake of curiosity.
Right, there we go. So I've uh, dusted that out and we can have a quick nosy here just to see if there's anything fun. So that guy, so that guy goes to the power switch. That guy goes to the back right sensor. That guy goes to the back left sensor. We've got the brush motor. That's the blower motor. That one is left side sensor and probably yeah just left side sensor i think is there two there i think there's something else on the left i'm not sure though and over here we've got two right hand sensor things that guy is the power input so that links that links those two terminals um, up to the main board and it also connects the battery connector up to the main board so the main board is actually managing battery charging there they're not joined up and then yeah we've got the two brusher we've got the two sweepers and the front side sensor bars cool all right yeah well that's about it it's pretty simple I kind of thought that, well, I don't know what I expected to be inside this thing, really. But that's what's inside these. Not a huge amount, really. It's um, a bunch of sensors and motors, sure. But um, other than that, it looks like most of the intelligence of this is just in the firmware. And presumably just its ability to pathfind. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if, things are, I wonder if this thing is actually any good. I don't know if like Roombas as a product are just a novelty or not, or whether they are actually very effective. I wouldn't bother using one uh, in my own home, but just because my home's not big enough. But huh, it's kind of curious. Right, I'll place this guy in. So that's got to go right up front and push all of these out the way. We need the front sensors just to drop into those little holes for them. I don't want to trap any plugs under this, but they all want to go under it. Is that in? I think that's ready to go in. Yeah, that feels good. It was hard to tell. What, because the wires go under this anyway, it's hard to tell when you're trapping something and whether that's just when it's supposed to be. Okay, time to join all of these up. I do like the way that this is all done on a single circuit board, though, <clears throat> and how fairly straightforward it is to disassemble. This is very repairable, in my opinion, especially given that the company that makes it seemed to be quite happy to ship out spare parts for it. So in this time where I feel like right to repair is very important, this seems to score very high, in my opinion. Okay, right, let's look for empty ports. So we've got these two guys got to go in. Then... This one had some extra connectors on it that the old board did not have. And I've left the old board in the other room. However, I can see there's no wires going to there, so that's fine. Hold up. What have I done there? Plug this cable in here, and the connector is different. Let me get the old board and check that. Right, so that connector was that big. And the new connector has two extra pins on it. So if you look here, you can see there's some extra unpopulated connections here and here, which look like they would go up to a larger connector. And on the new board, those connections are actually populated to additional pins. So Presumably this board is from an, a very similar model that has some extra stuff on it, maybe some extra buttons. This goes to the power button, 
So maybe there's some extra stuff there, some more lights or something like that. Um, however, so what we'll do is we'll keep this left aligned and the extra pins will just remain disconnected. And I'm sure that'll be absolutely fine. It's only a power button. It's not doing anything super important. If this was going to something more important, I might be worried about that. However, I think that'll be absolutely fine. All right, plug that top board in. And I've just got to make sure that these springs lie in a reachable manner. That looks good. Right, I'll put just two screws just to hold this together while I add in the front bumper. And then when I know that uh, everything is in place, I'll put the rest of the screws in. So that sensor bar comes into the front. So what captivates this? Oh, I see. Okay, so the front of it has got this little lip around the edge on both sides. If I flip that over, you can see we've got these little prongs sticking up and those hook in to the bumper bar and that, uh, and then when we screw the other bit of trim in underneath, that is what keeps this guy captive. So I've just got to make sure that starts out in the right place and then that should just slot back into place. Every time I hear those springs rattle around, I think there's something loose inside. There we go. Right, the brush has got a square bit at one end, which locates into the drive for that. And make sure we get that the right way around. That just clips down onto there. Oh, we had some screws under there. Back out. And I'm just going to brush down these wheels before I put them back in. Right, now this will be the hard bit. I assume that spring goes on. So that spring just grabs onto the hook underneath there. And now I've got to try and keep this tensioned as I put it back in so the spring doesn't fall off. Yeah, if I just push the wheel down, that sorts that out. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's in. Groovy. Screws. This device is just big enough that having um, larger handled screwdrivers would be enormously beneficial. Normally I'm a big fan of um, thin, narrow screwdrivers like these wearers because they're much, much faster. Um, however, obviously when you've got a thin handle like that, you have a lot less power. Now when you're in a laptop or on a desktop computer, you don't need power, but when you're drilling things into plastic like we are here, suddenly you need a lot more torque. I've put the rest of the screws in now and the battery put this guy in and um, yeah, let's see if it works. This side up, okay, that goes in that way. Okay, bam. Off it goes. Wow, it even made it across the uh, cable thing. It's, it's going over there. It's going to get trapped in that corner. Good luck over there, mate. It's a mess of rubbish in there where I'm still setting this place up. Look at him go. Let's see if he can figure his way out. Go on. Go on, son. I believe in you. 
Oh, that's the light. That's the light. <laughs> I'm amazed it can get over that cable thing. All right. Well, I think we'll call that a win, everyone. And I think I should stop him before he tries and who to hoover up some wires over there. <laughs> I don't know why. I think this thing is very funny to watch. Well, thank you very much for watching, everyone. As always, my support links are in the description down below uh, for my Twitter, my Patreon, and my Discord. Or stick around for the end card. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Well, I was almost impressed. Wah, 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 wah.